Hey there guys, Pastor Gary here, Calvary Chapel, Gloucester County, and uh, I'm back with you once again for our real-time uh, devotional uh, thought, and of course right now we're sort of focused on a series, and that's the Armor of God, and uh, we've already covered a couple pieces of that, and uh, we're going to cover, cover a couple more today, and uh, we'll see how far we get today. Uh, well, you know, uh, we keep hearing these different things, uh, politicians coming and going and giving us an idea of when things are going to end and when uh, uh, maybe maybe uh, within a month, maybe a month and a half, uh, whatever it is, I, I'm sure you're probably much like me, uh, sooner than later would be a better time. Um, but of course, we need to do things safely and we need to make sure we're doing them in the right way. Um, I hope that you're taking care of yourselves. If you have prayer requests, anything like that, please uh, make sure that we at the church know that. You can call the church, 856-302-1804, or you can contact us through our uh, online presence, and that would be info at cc-gc.org. So let us know these things. And uh, we've got outreach opportunities or, or, or ways that you can connect through the Zoom rooms and, and everything else. But anyway... As we deal with real time here today, and as we're dealing with our thought today, let me take you into the scripture real quick. And uh, of course, uh, we're dealing with the armor of God. And so the classic armor of God is what? It's the book of Ephesians, right? Sure. So Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verse 10, a final word, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. I'm reading New Living Translation today, by the way. Uh, Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. First thing again, put on all the pieces. He can't get away with one or two pieces. You've got to put them all on. And what we know about this is it's a daily exercise to put on all the armor of God. And, uh, and that's important. So it's all of it and it's daily. You don't get a day off from, from doing it. Uh, why do we need to do this? Because we need to uh, stand firm against the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, uh, against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Uh, our, I think in our first segment of the Armor of God, we talked about an unseen enemy and how we're fighting an unseen enemy. Well, we as believers understand that, and now the world understands fighting a virus and what that means as an unseen enemy. Well, we've been fighting unseen enemies uh, throughout our spiritual life, and uh, so we understand what it means uh, to stand against that. We understand uh, how difficult that can be at times. See, we always see things in the flesh, and, and we want to attack and deal with the flesh when the battle really is operating in the spiritual element. So anyway, as he goes on here, um, therefore, he, he tells us now in verse 13, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth. We talked about that. Don't be faked out by unreal uh, truth, that's for sure. And the body armor or the breastplate of righteousness, not our righteousness, his righteousness and protect your heart guard your heart for shoes put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared make sure your feet you're wearing the the shoes of the gospel the good news you and I should be busy with the good news uh, today and taking that out and sharing it with other people and of course in addition to all of these hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil now, the shield of faith, uh, as Paul is looking, remember, Paul is writing this from a from a bound in chains uh, in Rome, and he's writing to Ephesus, and he's, he's looking at that soldier that's there with him, and uh, the, he would know of the classic shield of faith. The, the soldier on the battlefield especially would have their shield of faith. Now, the, the Roman soldier battlefield shield was a shield that was probably about two feet wide I would think that's about two feet and it was about four feet high and it was pretty rugged you know sometimes made out of wood sometimes they would use uh, some type of a metal uh, they usually use hide in there someplace and they would layer it is what they would do and of course when the enemy would shoot a, a, a fiery dart in their way as it were uh, oft times they would shoot uh, fiery arrows at them and that shield was was imperative to have 
to block those fiery arrows. We know that, that the soldier became very, very skilled at using that shield. In fact, the, the, the Roman legions became very, very skilled at using those shields. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, what they would do is they would take that shield and they would interlock with the shields around them. So as they were marching forward, depending on the type of battle it was going to be, they would continue to move forward and they would have that shield in front of them. Well, when they got within range or whatever was going to be shot at them, th what the soldiers would do is the guys on the side would turn their shields to face out and on this side. So now you're protected down the sides. And then you would have the soldiers in the front. They would hold their shields up right about eye level. So it would go from their sh uh, shins up to their eyes and they would keep marching. The guys in the back then, or in the center sections, would all layer their shields on top. So literally, if you were firing arrows across the top to come in uh, to penetrate the soldiers, it couldn't hit them from the top, you couldn't hit them from the sides, from the back or from the front. They were impervious to the darts that were coming from the enemy. Now, I find that of great interest, why? Because you and I seem to want to fight so often by ourselves. The shield of faith works very effectively, though, when we can interlock them together. When you and I go to battle together, when the enemy is firing darts, I need my brothers and I need my sisters. Now, the way they would fight was interesting, too. They had a word that they would use. It was something along the lines of uh, tutoro. And tutoro was basically the way they would line up with each other. And they would march in, things, uh, uh, shields all about them, darts flying at them, yet nothing getting into them. But there were drawbacks to fighting this way. Um, there were drawbacks to doing it the way they were doing it. Uh, first of all, a drawback would be you're not moving really fast. You're sort of lumbering along as you were going. But understand something about the church and about the body. We were never equipped and we were never designed to, to sprint. You know, sometimes we get this idea that, that in a foot race, we've got to run as fast as we can uh, as the body of Christ, but that's not what we're to do. We are in a marathon, folks. Look, from the time you're a believer till the time the Lord takes you home, you have got to pace yourself in the proper way and realize that this is a day in and day out grind. This isn't going to happen all at once. This is something that you and I have to get used to. We have to continue to move forward at that pace and understand that's exactly what God wants from us. Secondly, when you're fighting in this kind of a battle formation, um, you are only as strong as the people that are around you. And instead of us tearing down one another, instead of us uh, hurting one another, it's it's important for me to build up my brothers and sisters. It's important for me to encourage my brothers and sisters. Why? Because we are interlocking and we are shoulder to shoulder in this battle that's raging on. We are following our king as he leads us into battle. The, the second piece of armor I wanted to talk to you about here real quick is the idea, not only are we to have our shield of faith, and let's face it, Faith is definitely what we need, and if you're not ready to go in with faith, then what in the world do you have, right? But we're also, as it says in 17, to put on salvation as your helmet and take, oh, and I don't want to get into the sword of the Spirit yet. Put on the helmet of salvation. If you don't have your head, you're in real trouble, right? You don't see, other than, other than, um, other than in Sleepy Hollow, there's not many soldiers that can fight without their heads. You understand what I'm saying? You and I need our heads. A helmet on top of your head in the middle of battle is really important. I find it interesting that Paul would say the helmet of salvation. Do you know what that gives you? It's that constant reminder. You see, your salvation, Paul would write to us in another portion of the scriptures. Paul would say, you're in Thessalonians, by the way. Paul would say to you that salvation is your hope. We have a hope because of our salvation. You know, in the day of coronavirus and all this other stuff, there's a lot of people that are discouraged and depressed. I'm telling you to go back to the helmet of salvation, to think again of what that salvation is. 
Hey guys, if you don't protect your heads, you're going to learn quickly that many battles, all your battles, are won and lost right here. Well, what do you mean? The classic example is Romans 12, right? 1 and 2. I, I beseech you, I beg you, in light of everything that God has done, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. But then he goes on and he says, but we need to renew our minds. Why? Because we have this, we have the residue of thinking that is defeatism is what it is. And when we see hardships around us, we tend to go backwards. We tend to lose our heads in the middle of it. When the truth is, you and I have to understand through the Word of God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, through connecting with my brothers and sisters, I am more than a conqueror. See, instead of thinking cowardly, we've got to think in a way that we're conquerors. Instead of thinking that we're defeated, we've got to, we've got to understand that we are victors is what we are. We are those who should be standing firm in the gospel. And our salvation is that connection. We have entered into a new relationship. We have entered into a new family. We have entered into a power that we never possessed before. So go out there with that shield today. When people are throwing those darts at you, when the enemy is firing darts at you, you just let your shield take that. Built in layer after layer after layer. And when your mind starts to think defeated, you remember the salvation that you have acquired, that you have now through Jesus Christ, who died to give his life for you. Let's continue putting on the armor each and every day. Tomorrow, we will finish up, and um, I think you'll find it pretty exciting. Amen.